So the other day I put together a malefic beatdown strategy and showed it off here on the channel. And in that video, I got a ton of comments asking for an OTK build of malefic. So that's exactly what I'm going to be bringing you guys in today's video. This is malefic instead of the beatdown version where it's more of a control build. This is the OTK build. And I'm excited to be bringing it to you guys because I love anime decks. I love these kind of movie decks and it's so fun to be bringing it here to you guys on the channel. So if you guys want to see more of these anime decks, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys want to see and I'll make it happen and build them as competitively as possible. So with that being said, let's get right into the Malefic OTK deck profile. So I want to get right into this deck profile, but before I do, I do want to say that this is still a rogue deck. This is not a deck that you're obviously going to take to a YCS and win a YCS with. I mean, honestly, if you did, that would be really impressive. But this is still a rogue deck. However, it is a very fun way to play this deck. And again, with the new ban list, this deck is really powerful. It's gotten buffed so much. So let's get right into it here. Of course, we are still playing three of the Malefic Paradigm Dragon, three Cyber End Dragon, as well as three of the Malefic Stardust Dragon. So all of these Malefic monsters are really important to max out on. These are essentially how you're going to be winning your game. Now, keep in mind, these monsters are really big beaters on their own. I mean, Cyber End being 4K, this being 4K, this being 25. It's very important to have these monsters available to you because this is how you're going to be able to win a lot of the games. Now, with a lot of the cards in the deck, you're going to be able to break boards, but then once you break the board, you actually have to push for a lot of damage. And luckily, this deck has no problem pushing for a ton of damage. So that's why we're maxing out on all the three of these. And the nice thing is you're not playing the bricks in your deck, like you're not playing Malefic Rainbow Dragon or Malefic Blue Eyes, where you have to play bricks. With this one, you're playing Stardust and Cyber End, where essentially at any point, you can just slap him onto your side of the field and you have a ton of damage just right there, right? So that's why we're maxing out on these ones. And then we're also maxing out out on Malefic Paradox gear. We're playing three Paradox gear. And the reason for that is because it gives you access to your Malefic Parallel gear, and it gives you access to also special summon Malefic monsters without needing to use their actual cost. So what do I mean by that? If this card is in your graveyard, for example, what you can do, instead of banishing a Stardust from your extra deck to summon Stardust Dragon, you can banish the Paradox gear instead. And that's a really nice bonus because it makes it so that you don't have to max out of the extra deck monsters. You can play two and two and get away with it because this card is going to be your third. It also gets itself in the graveyard because you contribute it to summon your parallel gear so it'll put itself in the graveyard which is really nice for you and on top of that getting to malefic parallel gear which we're only playing two of by the way helps you get into some of your level 10 synchros if you don't otk your opponent you can end on something like baron de floor or if you want to even push for more damage you can make something like a chenying which is going to be able to gain a bunch of attack and try to push for game that way right so that's why malefic parallel gear is really powerful now the only reason we're playing two and not three is because in this otk build we really need to make space for cards to help you break more and to help you actually push for more damage. While Parallel Gear is really powerful, it's really easy to get into with your Paradox Gear, and this card in your hand doesn't really do much for you, right? You'd rather not draw this. The only reason we're playing two is because your Paradox Gear needs to special summon one from your deck. And so if you draw the one of, you need to have the second one in deck for your Paradox Gear to be useful, right, essentially? So that's why we're playing the three Paradox Gear as well as the two Parallel Gear. And then of course, we are playing three Malefic World. This deck lives and dies by the field spell, so you have to be playing three of the field spell you want to get to this as fast as possible on top of that it does help you get your malefic cards in your hand so if you open a bunch of board breakers let's say in your hand and you don't actually open the malefic names this helps you get to a malefic name instead of your draw phase you can essentially get into your malefic monsters which is really nice of course we're playing the terraforming as well to get into your malefic world we're also playing one malefic divide malefic divide is really powerful because it can target a malefic monster in your graveyard special summon it ignoring its summoning conditions and then you banish it during the end phase but that doesn't matter it's really cool in the battle phase you can use this card because if you're using your parallel gear plus a stardust for example to make a level 10 synchro so let's say you make a baron to floor okay cool now in your battle phase when you're trying to push for more damage you can activate your malefic divide summon back your stardust dragon push for more damage right so that's why i like playing the one divide we're only playing two malefic selector the only reason we're on two malefic selector is because in this deck where we're cutting down on the parallel gear and we really want to focus on opening board breakers you wanted to make that space this card is really powerful so you banish two malefic cards from your graveyard to add two malefic cards from your deck to your hand and while that's really powerful it is a little bit more difficult in a build like this one where you're just trying to break boards and push for game to actually set up your selector and that's why I'm playing the two selector, of course. I think it's perfectly fine. You can always get to this when you need it. You'll always see it, especially with the consistency of this deck. I'm going to say with three upstart back, 
it's very consistent. Like playing 37 card deck means that you're always gonna see the cards that you need to see, which is really nice, right? So that's why we're only playing the two selector. And then we're still playing three Malefic Territory. Now, Territory is the most important card in your deck. I keep saying this every time I talk about this list, you have to be playing three. This card, first of all, gets you to a Malefic world from your deck and activates it. So it can get Ash, which is really nice. And that's essentially, I mean, again, it's really important because the deck lives or dies by the Malefic world. On top of that, it has a second effect where essentially all these Malefic monsters have an effect that you can only control one Malefic monster. However, with this card, it makes the effect that you can only control one of each name, which means that I can summon a Cyber End Dragon and summon a Stardust Dragon. Without this card, I can only have one Malefic monster on my board, but with the territory here, I can have multiple Malefic monsters and that's really important. And then the third effect is really important as well because during the battle phase, their effects are negated. Why is that important? Because they also all have effects that other monsters you have control cannot declare an attack. And of course, in an OTK build, you need to be able to attack with all your monsters. So for that reason, having the Malefic territory is one of the most important things that you guys need to have in your deck. So three Malefic territory. Then we're playing three Fenrir and two Pankratops. Pankratops also came back to two, which is another buff for this deck. Of course, being able to break boards, it helps you do so much this card. And it's really nice because it synergizes really well with Fenrir. Now I know Fenrir, I guess this overall is actually a very budget deck. So if you guys wanted to cut the Fenrir and make it a little bit more budget, you guys can do that as well. I'll talk about that in a second. But the reason why I think Fenrir and Pankratops are so good is because Pankratops says that your opponent has to control more monsters than you do, while Fenrir says what you have to control no cards. So if you're going second, and let's say your opponent even puts up two monsters, that's all their board is. Their board is one monster, two monsters, that's it. You can summon your Fenrir, your opponent still controls more monsters than you, so you can then summon your Pankratops. And these are board breakers for you. Pankratops, of course, pops a card. Fenrir in the battle phase can help you manage a card. So it helps you push for a lot more damage and helps you OTK. That's why I really like the Fenrir and Pankratops. Now, like I said, Fenrir is kind of on the more pricier side if you're comparing it to the rest of this deck. So you guys can swap Fenrir out for honestly any other board breaker. That's the really cool thing about this deck is that you can play any kind of board breaking cards. You can play Triple Tactics Talents in here. You guys can play the Lightning Storms, which I have in the side deck. You guys can play them in the main deck. Any board breakers, any cards that are going to help you OTK is going to be the best thing you guys can play, right? So for that reason, I do want to say playing the Fenrir uh, is really powerful. However, if you don't have Fenrirs, that's okay too, right? We're also playing the one change of heart and the three mind control. Mind control coming back to three, absolutely insane. Why is this insane? Because we can start off all our turns by activating mind control and change of heart. Now, if our opponent has negates, they have to negate these cards, which means all our malefic cards are gonna go through. Now, if they don't have negates for these cards, you can take your opponent's monsters, link them away so that now you're breaking their board, adding a monster to your board, and then you can slap all the malefic monsters on the board push for more damage. Do you guys see how it works? So that's why Mind Control and Change of Heart are so powerful and I very much recommend playing them in this deck. Then of course we're playing the Harpy's Feather Duster for those pesky back row matchups. I like to main deck one of these. I know it's one of those cards that uh, you can probably put in the side if you guys wanted to. I like to main deck it. If you guys do want to put it in the side deck, put a Call by the Grave in here instead. Called by the Grave is another powerful card. I'm just liking to main the main deck Harpy's Feather Duster because it is kind of like a board breaker against decks like Rescue Ace, Labyrinth, which are really prominent in today's format, right? So Harpy's Feather Duster, three Imperm. Imperm, really good card. Why? You draw it as your sixth card, it's a board breaker. It's also a hand trap. So that's really nice about Imperm. And on top of that, if you aren't OTKing your opponent, you can actually just set the Imperm and then you have another form of disruption that way, right? So that's why Imperm is so good. Imperm and Fenrir are also so good for that reason, because even if you don't OTK, Fenrir is a layer of disruption, which is really nice for you, right? So that's why I really like Imperm in this deck. And then lastly, three upstart goblin, 37 card deck. You guys might be wondering, but Spanko, you're giving your opponent life points. Do you want to give your opponent life points in a deck that wants to OTK? It's no problem in this deck. You're playing 4,000 beat sticks, 2,500. You're doing easily 10K damage, 13, 12. You're doing a lot of damage. So even if you're using two upstart goblin in a duel, you're going to be able to OTK your opponent, no problem. So that's it for the main deck. 40 cards in the main deck, very consistent. For the extra deck, it's very simplistic. Two paradox dragon to summon your paradigm, two stardust to summon your stardust, two cyber end to summon your cyber end. Makes a lot of sense, right? So th this is something that I wouldn't change. I play two, two, and two. I wouldn't max out on these only because again, your paradox gear can be a replacement. So you don't need to max out on these, right? So two, two, and two is really powerful. One of the Gustav Max as well as one Libe. Now Gustav Max is really good because it only takes two level 10 monsters. And if you push for a ton of damage, remember how I said with upstart, let's say we're not able to OTK. Let's say, you know, use upstart once or twice, your opponent's left at a thousand life points, even 2000 life points. Slap on a Gustav Max, burn your opponent for game. Very powerful card. Then we're playing the one Geomath Mech Final Sigma. Very nice level 12 synchro that you guys can make if you're using a level 10 plus your parallel gear. So Geomath Mech Final Sigma is really powerful. Baron de Fleur, of course. Chen Ying, I kind of talked about these cards already. Really powerful cards on their own. Good level 10 synchros. Then we're playing IP Mask Arena, SP Little Knight. Again, SP is a little bit expensive. I just wanted to show it to you guys because it's the most optimal card to play. Just play generic Link Monsters. That's that's literally what this is. You guys can play Avermax. You guys can play Boral Sword. You guys can play 
any generic link monsters because the whole point of these link monsters over here is not necessarily to be able to do a ton of damage but it's just so if you use your mind control you can just link your opponent's monsters away and then be able to break their board right because with mind control you can't actually attack with the cards that you take so for that reason you need to be able to use those monsters that you're taking right and link summoning is the best way to do it so ip sp nightmare unicorn over here access code talker these are just kind of the ones that i'm playing and again this is just because sp is the most optimal very powerful card on its own but even ip and sp you guys can swap these for any other generic link twos you guys can play dark because you're playing a ton of dark monsters here also dark is a really powerful link too because a lot of people are playing dark monsters you guys can be playing asa can you can take your opponent's fenrir sometimes if your opponent's playing fenrir there's just so many link monsters that you guys can play as long as you're playing generic link two link three link monsters that's all you're going to need because that's what you're going to need for your mind control and your change of heart right so guys with this part i would suggest playing unicorn and access code for sure but the other two cards any generic monsters could be really powerful now for a side deck i like to show you guys a side deck side deck is always going to be up to personal preference of course but i like playing two lightning storm over here as well as three cosmic cyclone i don't want to deal with back row i hate it this really does well against front row matchups and so for that reason i feel like the main deck is really good for front row matchups for back row matchups lightning storm and cosmic cyclone is really important now if you guys do choose to put harpy's feather duster in the side and play called by the grave in the main deck i just cut one cyclone and play the harpy's feather duster here instead the reason i like cyclones because i feel like anti-spell is going to be very permanent in today's format anti-spell is an absolutely insane card so i don't want to lose to that as you guys can see we're playing a lot of spell cards cosmic cyclone is really powerful in that sense and then when you're forced to go first skill drain you just literally side into the beatdown version so skill drain goes in match D barrier, solemn judgment. These are your going first cards. When your opponent is like, wait, I don't want to get OTK'd again. I'm going to make him go first. What does this deck do going first? Put up a monster. Who cares? All right, cool. Side out your mind control. Side out your change of heart. Side out your panker tops. You can keep the Fenrir's in. That's a really cool thing about Fenrir. Fenrir is good going first and second. Keep the Fenrir's in, but you can side out one, two, three, four, five, six right here to put in six cards. And then you can also side out some of the cards as well. Harpy's Feather Duster, seven cards, etc., etc. So that's why I like playing these cards. But again, side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. You guys can kind of build it how you guys want to build it. But guys, oh my God, as an OTK build i think malefic is one of the most fun decks to play again it's a rogue deck but bro imagine slapping malefic cyber and dragon and winning a game with this card it's absolutely insane so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that is my take on malefic otk for the january 2024 format now with the most recent ban list i feel like this deck got buffed in so many different ways upstart goblin for the consistency my control to be able to help you break boards and otk your opponent it makes this deck very very powerful now if you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one we are uploading every single day in the month of december and honestly i know the month is almost done so if you guys want to see everything we have uploaded and or everything that's yet to come make sure you guys subscribe so you guys can stay tuned into all that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko signing out peace